twist of fate, we are going to be actually participating in Marchintosh with this video because, well, I saw the event page go up and I thought I wanted to participate, but I didn't think I had anything really relevant until I looked to my shelf and realized I had a couple of things that might just, you know, work for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of try and be like Draga 1 here and do something that's kind of stupid, but nonetheless kind of fun. So if you guys have been watching me for long enough, which you probably have, you may know that I'm kind of into my iPods. I have my baby right here, which is a fifth gen in a classic case and all that wonderful stuff. And this is my daily driver, quote unquote when I do use it, and I have an actual collection of iPods, and one of them is this fourth gen that I've kind of refurbished, and, well, this is the last iPod to be able to sync over FireWire connections. So, I remember back in the day when this machine was new, you could actually install Mac OS X from this iPod. You could image the installer disk onto this iPod and install it from the iPod itself. And if you had a USB iPod like this, actually, with this one would work too, and a machine that supported USB booting, you can actually do the same thing with Windows by putting this in the disk mode. So what we're going to try and do is not install Mac OS from this iPod, but we're going to install Mac OS to this iPod and try and boot because these power PC machines actually will boot from FireWire devices. USB is a bit of a hack job, but FireWire should be perfectly adequate. So our test subject here is this 2003 PowerBook G4. I believe it's a 1.5 gigahertz or 1.33. And I got this thing a couple months ago, I think a few months ago now, and it was kind of of uh, in sorry shape. The chassis was a little bent out of shape, but the cool thing is the battery still holds a charge, but I do, do have it plugged in, and we're just going to see if we can do that with this. So before we get into this, we kind of need to find an appropriate OS to put on this thing. So let us consult the Bible of OS releases here, because I do keep a very big stack of vintage Apple discs. I believe 10.2 is not going to work on this machine. So I think we are going to be doing Panther. And I do have it under a CD form here. So we're going to try and install And I believe we only need the first two discs. I could be wrong. I do have a backup version here on these matte white discs. So we're going to try these ones first and then we'll go to the backups. So let's... Get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna boot this thing off the drive. Actually, no, we're gonna boot this thing into the OS first. All right, so I'm doing this all through the viewfinder, so hopefully this doesn't suck too much. Let's go ahead and power it up. Sounds like there's already a drop or a disc in the drive. Interesting. We'll just get that out, you know, when we get into an OS. Well, I do have a 10.4 install disk, so I mean, if uh, this doesn't go to plan with the 10.3, we can always use 10.4. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this boy in on the side. I'm going to try and do it without looking. So now we're booted. I'm going to go ahead and connect this up. And we're booted into the OS. And yeah, the screen is a bit yellowed, unfortunately. Not much I can really do about that. So I'm going to go ahead and do is throw in CD1. Now there are three CDs, I believe, for just a base install. The first two CDs should be perfectly fine. Now, there is another twist to this whole thing. Fortunately, this thing is taking forever to boot. This has actually got an SD card in it. It's not using the stock hard drive. Though I do know where the stock hard drive is if I really wanted to go that route. But yeah, this thing is is running solid state storage so we don't have to worry about that thank jobs however it is taking a concerningly long time to start up so that might be bad but it's not gonna matter because we're gonna just wipe the whole thing anyway and I'm gonna cry when it has to resync because it does take forever all right well this thing was kind of acting a fool last I used it, so maybe this is going to become an impromptu iPod repair video. I hope not. Wait, whoopsie daisy. Disk mode, disk mode, disk mode. Hmm, hmm. Oh, there it goes. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So let's see if it pops up. Disk utility. There's Chris's iPod, so it is working. It is Windows formatted, so I'm going to very quickly format it in disk utility. Oh, no iTunes. No. Go away. Oh dear. I'll be right back. I have to, I forgot. I have to like put this thing in manual disk mode or iTunes is just going to force eject it every time. Okay. Or for some reason 
It is on, but if iTunes is closed, it ejects it. That is not supposed to happen. All right. <sighs> Excuse me, what? <laughs> Why are you like this? All right, let's try this again. It's trying to treat it like a normal iPod that's not in disc mode, and it's really annoying. God, this can be like a, literally a drag of one video where things go wrong. All right, erase. Mac OS extended. Erase. Erase. Is it going to break? That worked, okay. Hopefully that means it will now stay in disc mode. Now, we need to partition this, because I believe currently it is, okay, it is on a Apple partition map, which is what we want. All right, everything looks good. We are gonna reboot the computer from the disc. And yeah, now it is actually staying in disc mode, which is nice. So we're gonna go system preferences. Where is my startup disc? I'm doing this through the viewfinder and I can barely see. So there's 10.3, we're gonna restart. And we'll be back after it's finished restarting because, boy, this is going to take forever. <sighs> so we have the optical drive spinning and we have an Apple logo, but it's not attempting to read from the disc. I do have a way out of this, but it's not very desirable and it's kind of cheating. But I'm going to give it another go with the backup discs because, boy, yep, I have them right here. I'm probably just going to kill this thing and reboot it because, as we can see, it's just been sitting here forever now. All right, it's backup plan time. I'm going to hold Option in the mouse button because I want it to give me the disk back, but I do not want it to boot into Mac OS just yet. I actually want it to boot to the boot picker, then I'm going to slot the other disk in, make it rescan, and we should be good to go. There we go. And we're in the boot picker, which is exactly what we wanted. And that pod came to life, which is nice. So let's go ahead and boot this thing from our backups, which it's scratched up, but it works better than my clean discs. So the theory is all of this should be perfectly possible because if we remember, Dank Pods actually did something similar with his fifth gen iPod, or I believe it was a classic, I can't remember, but did it with Windows 10 and, you know, a more modern iPod. So I guess this is more of a vintage Mac twist on the same practice so to speak. Oh dear, I guess this machine shipped on a newer version of 10.3 than the retail, which <sighs> means we're using Tiger, I guess. Such a shame. I decided to adjust the angle just a tad because, well, I would really like some space to actually work here. Now, I was scared for a second there because it automatically did a refresh when I put the disc in and it came up with nothing. But then I hit the refresh again and now the disc is perfectly there and macOS has verified that it is a cromulent install disc that we will be using. So hopefully this will work because 10.4 is very much newer than this machine. It should work. If I really wanted this to go like with no trouble whatsoever, I would have used the iMac G4, but the problem is the iMac G4 kind of doesn't have a head right now because I unfortunately managed to destroy the display cable. And yeah, I could hook it up to one of the, you know, monitors in the back via a display adapter, but you know, why not use something that's just a convenient all-in-one package here, right? Right. We are finally in the installer. Whew, that took a while. So, select our language. Let's watch as this thing tries to ultimately stop our progress some way, somehow. So thankfully, the iPod is connected. So we're gonna go ahead and attempt to install to it. Ooh, it's gonna let me do it. <laughs> let us, we are gonna customize this installation because we do not want to install the full thing. That would suck. Let's see, what do we want on here? We do not need printer drivers. We do not need additional fonts. We do not need language translations. This is all just gonna be a proof of concept. I don't want to actually get uh, like a full tilt version of Mac OS on here. So let's go ahead and install it and we'll see what happens. You know, I'm just gonna pray that my disc is good. God, that optical drive does not sound happy. Now, what's weird is if my iMac G3, the one I had way back in like 2005 is any indication, well, this thing can actually boot from USB so long as it's an optical drive, which I do have a USB optical drive here. So if this one doesn't work, but it hasn't given me any indication that it shouldn't work, I've got a backup. So here's hoping that this just installs and well, I'll join you guys on the other side at this point because just let it go. Oh my God, it actually worked. Let's see if I can boot off of it now. Thing is, a little warm. Not as warm as it would be if we were running the hard drive though. Let's let this thing get to the boot picker. Oh my God, there it is. And because I like silence, let's go ahead and get our disc out. 
I think it's not happy. Okay, so it's gonna rescan for some odd reason, though it really doesn't need to. It's not gonna find the iPod for some reason, and the iPod is uh, gone dead to the world. So I'm gonna have to initiate a manual rescan, even though it found it on the first try. <sighs> MacOS, why you do this to me? Did it, did it? It just booted the iPod and now it's like dead to the world. Uh, okay, it's back and it kicked it off again. What? All right, let's do this again, I guess. All right, I found it. The iPod keeps wanting to just eject itself and it's getting kind of annoying. So let's go ahead and, and try it once it hopefully finishes before the iPod decides it's, you know, gonna, I am out of here, man. All right, here goes nothing. Still saying it do not disconnect, which is good. Let's see if she actually boots. I'm gonna jump cut and we'll see if anything exciting happens, yeah? Ooh, we're at the blue screen. Come on, I believe in you. This thing is probably slow because even though Firewire 400 is a very, very nice data bus for throughput, the SD to IDE adapter that's in there is... Hey, we've got the welcome screen, yay. But even though it's, you know, running basically solid state storage, the actual card in there, or the card adapter, is not very fast. And it's going through multiple layers of adaptation. It's going from a CF card or SD card to CF, CF to IDE, and that's where we're at here. So let's go ahead and get this thing through the setup. And thankfully, you don't have to really do all that much in here. We can see if we have. All right, there we go. I'm not gonna transfer my information. US, skip. Let's see. No password, because again, this is all very temporary. I do not care. Just let me through. We are, in fact, in PST. It actually has found the date, interestingly enough. And there's our hard drive. Um, we are going to decline. So we do not want iTunes to open right now. That would be terrible. Yeah, there's our hard drive right there. And in fact, if we go into Command Shift U and Disk Utility, we can see we are in fact booted off the iPod because there's our Western Digital hard drive right there. So let's go ahead and just benchmark this thing, right? Let's see how well it does the reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and I believe this is not gonna be really an accurate test because unfortunately this is unpatched tiger let me see i believe this is the retail version yeah 10.4.0 i believe the version that's on the hard drive is 10.4.11 so i'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this disc is ready to go yep 10.4.11 i am gonna grab my iphone i'm going to put it in airplane mode so we don't get interrupted here and we're gonna just time this thing now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hold it at the boot picker because i want to make sure that i just get it booting off that thing in case it decides to you know kick itself off again and it is a very good thing i opted to do that because as we can see here bumping the camera it did kick itself off disc mode so i'm gonna have to actually no no came back okay good 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 so we are gonna first test the ipod and i did want to give it a full restart like i just did before we you know do this so go ahead and put this right here it already is selected and we're just gonna let it rip I'm gonna bump the tripod a few more times here as I try to get in position all right we have the arrow cursor on your marks get set So about roughly 48 seconds, because I was a bit late on the stop there. So let's go ahead and go in the startup disk. Actually, we're going to do the same criteria all over again. So we're going to start it back up at the boot picker and this time select the hard drive. All right, we are at the hard drive this time, waiting for the boot picker to, you know, finish its scan. iPod is in my hand and disconnected. So let's get this thing ready with this. And 48 seconds is our time to beat. So we'll see if the internal hard drive is any faster or any slower now this is for entertainment purposes only this is not meant to be any kind of benchmark because again if i really wanted to do this scientifically i would be updating the ipods os 10 build to 10.4.11 so that said let's get ready we are on the arrow three two one go 
Oh, it's not looking good for the iPod. And we booted it in about 30 seconds. So a 10, now 18 second lead on the iPod. Again, not surprising because even though, yes, the iPod is using solid state storage in this case, well, an SD card, it's going through a couple of layers of adaptation, which probably puts up a speed penalty on it on top of the fact that, again, it's just probably not as fast as, you know, a good hard drive. I believe the hard drive in here is actually 7200 RPM. I could be wrong, but yeah, the iPod is not mega fast. It's fast enough for, you know, just loading your music onto it, but for running a computer OS on it, eh, not so much. So that was our grand experiment. You can install Mac OS from an iPod. Yes, easy enough to do. You just image your disk onto the iPod and you're done. But you can also install Mac OS onto an iPod, which kind of makes flash modded fourth gens very useful for working on PowerPC Macs. So it makes it a really good bridge kind of box in a way. So that's really it for this video. Thank you for joining me for this stupid little experiment. And well, happy Marchintosh.